Hey folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. So, down in the garage working on the army trucks again. Weather is finally starting to break. Although, uh, don't know how great a weather it's going to be. It's beautiful today and tomorrow they're talking about uh, snow again. So, who knows. So, I'm going to take advantage of uh, a little bit of a warm evening here. And uh, we're going to show you a quick one. Um, it's something that uh, I get a question on. Uh, quite a bit on a lot of the uh, message boards and forums uh, dedicated to the M715 uh, trucks. And that is about uh, moving the driver's seat back for a little more room. So uh, I am a tall fellow. I'm six foot three. Um, and so it does make it a little tight in the cab. So any, any way to move the seat back and give myself a little more room is an advantage. So Sit back. That's what we're going to do on this episode of Green Iron TV. Like always, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you go check out the all the cool Green Iron merchandise like the hats, t-shirts. Uh, that'll be in the link down below. So check that out and uh, we'll get started today. Okay. We've been able to move this seat back about three inches to get a little bit extra room. So one of the things you'll notice is that if you look, the gap between the stock passenger seat and of course this driver's seat, you can see how much farther back it is. So that's gaining quite a bit. One of the disadvantages though, is that the stock rifle rack that goes in the corner and down to the bottom. So uh, the top bracket needs to come out because obviously the seat's in the way with it there. So, um, you know, it's it's an advantage and disadvantage. Uh, I'd rather have the room than lose that. And that of course is one of the reasons why we have the uh, commander's rack over there to mount our M16. So these seats are adjustable. So you have a lever to pull out and you can adjust and you can see I already have the seat adjusted all the way back and uh, the seat frame bolts into the floor and one of the things some guys have done is you know they'll take and they'll modify uh, how the seat bolts onto the, um, the frame and of course you can kind of see with the adjusters with it slid all the way back you have these adjustments. So what guys will do is they'll they'll take and they'll cut these out, these pins out, and relocate them so that it slides farther back. It's you know that can be done, but uh, I've found a far easier piece to do that. And so what I've done is I made some brackets, and as you can see here. I have them on all. I have them on all the legs, and uh, what that does is these are the original bolt holes, and of course where we've relocated back. So basically, what we've done is move the whole entire seat back three inches. Um, now, some people are going to be like, "Wait a minute, that's you know now your seat's not bolted in directly into the tub. What about a crash or?" anything like that and I'm like well you don't have any seat belts anyway so not really gonna matter much so so I'll go ahead I'll show you uh, the brackets we made okay so this is one of the brackets that we make the floor bracket out of and uh, these are linked from a company called a and a manufacturing that makes all kinds of brackets and tabs. So I'll go ahead and I'll post a link uh, where you can buy these brackets. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can pick them up for a couple bucks a piece and uh, makes a quick, quick way to uh, fix and move your seats back. So these brackets overall are just a touch over four, about four and a half inches overall length and of course the holes center to center are three inches 
So this is just a regular bracket. It comes with half inch holes on both sides. Um, you know, nothing special. So what we do then is we take take one of those brackets and then on the back side we're going to chamfer and cut in and then we're going to get a tapered head bolt and that way it'll fit in and be nice and flush so um, you could always you know put a couple of tack welds on here uh, i found it really doesn't have to be too bad you know to do something like that uh, but then you know, you put this in, bolt your seat to there, and then bolt your regular stock floorboard bolt right back down through there, and uh, makes it nice and easy. Okay, so we have the bracket. Of course, we still have the seat bolted up in a couple spots. I've unbolted the one side here, so we got some room to flex it up um, to be able to get underneath washer and nut for that side and then of course our original bolt to bolt down through the floor that bolted the original so simply with the seat moved back you know this is going to give us the room we need and so put the bolt in nice and get that snug down a little Put our washer not on the back side. So, of course, this makes it nice and difficult because you're back here on the back side of this leg. And so, when you go to grab the uh, wrench, just about everything's in the way. And of course, this is a lot easier when that bolt's brand new, fresh, and doesn't have paint all over it. Yeah, we'll, we'll muscle it down there. So now once we're snugged up, we can go ahead and tighten up our bolts back. Yeah, we're gonna need the deep socket. Like I said, you are kind of on a goofy angle up underneath there. Just a little one in the back that we took loose to help demonstrate. Stick that one back in. All right, so that's how we've been able to get this seat mounted three inches farther back. So, you know, the nice thing is, is we still have uh, full adjustability. So if someone shorter wants to drive this vehicle, um, you know, we still have the ability to, to undo the latch and slide the seat forward. Of course, when no one's, it's much easier to do it when you're sitting in it to use your, your weight to help pull it forward. But, uh, you know, this gives us the best range so that we can have our full length for being tall, still let somebody slide it forward if they need to, if they're short. Uh, plus, the other nice thing is, keeps everything original. So, if for some reason this ever needs to be returned back to 100% original, all we got to do is unbolt, take our four brackets out, slide the seat back up forward the three inches, Bolt it all back in, 
and it is right back to where it was originally in stock so it's a huge advantage like I said being a taller person uh, to get in there and and make plenty of room So like we've said, it gives you quite a bit of room being a tall person to be able to get in, have plenty of room, and uh, be able to get, uh, especially with long legs, get on the pedals and so forth like that underneath the steering wheel. Uh, instead of being through about three inches farther forward, which uh, for me bunches me up and gets my legs into the bottom. So being moved back, Gives me all that room and all that ability. So, great little tech tip for those of you with 715s that are looking for a little bit extra room in the cab. Okay, and another little tech tip, because once again, I always have guys on the message boards and forums Asking about uh, spark plugs and how to get spark plugs in and out with the original waterproof wiring. So, best thing to do, and you can find these from numerous uh, of the military parts vendors, is get one of these spark plug wrenches. It's basically a crow's foot uh, that fits over the uh, waterproof connector. Allows you to come in down alongside of it and be able to spin that uh, waterproof connector off the top and get it up and out of the way. So it works really, really nice. Okay, so I went and grabbed an old wire just to help demonstrate. So what this allows you to do to come down and get a hold of that nut there on the top. And it allows you to spin that off the off the spark plug. Of course, this is, I just had that basically just a couple threads in. Um, and it also works. So this has also got, this is actually an angled plug wire. So same thing, allows you to come in, get on that plug wire and loosen it up and then be able to spin it off and pull your plug wire out. So one of the things too, people, these, uh, these waterproof wires, they don't need to be torqued down to a couple bazillion torque pounds. That's the other thing. People get carried away and, uh, you know, they think they need to, uh, you know, torque them way, way down. Well, and then when you try and loosen them up, what happens is you end up spinning the spark plug out and uh, it just makes it a pain in the ass. So these just need to be snug. So you just down and just a little snug. And that's all they need to be. They don't need to be cranked way down. So another little tech tip. So if you're running any military vehicle with the uh, you know stock shielded waterproof wires set, pick up one of these. Um, you know, have it. I actually keep. I actually keep a couple of them. So I got that one. I got an older, rustier one that came out of. So you keep those around just because you never know when you're gonna need them. Uh, you know, even uh, like in a, I keep them, like if I when I go to shows and so forth like that, I always make sure I throw one of those in a tool kit uh, with the tools I'm taking, uh, along with the spare set of plugs, because you just never know. You file a plug, you know, load and unload in the vehicle, uh, putting it around the show spots, you know, it's a nice easy way to be able to get the plugs in and out. Okay, folks, that's going to take care of a couple quick tips uh, here on the M715 style vehicles. Uh, that can The seat can also be used in the 725 ambulance, 726 uh, maintenance trucks. So uh, just a little tip. To help give you that little bit extra room in the cab especially if you're a taller person uh, makes it nice and easy so like i said it's a nice and easy um, little modification easy to do um, won't cost you very much money uh, you know you're 
with the brackets and the bolts and stuff, you're probably under $15. Uh, plus, the nice thing is, it is reversible. So if anybody needs to uh, return a vehicle back to 100% original, quick and easy to do that. Um, you know, there's no cutting, welding, modifications, anything like that. So nice, quick little change uh, to be able to get you that extra room. Plus, uh, you know, on those plug wires, definitely if you have any uh, of the old military vehicles with the waterproof shielded wires, please find one of those tools. Uh, tons of the military surplus vendors carry them. Um, a lot of times don't have them listed on their sites, but sometimes just call them and say, "Hey, I'm you know I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for the the uh, crow's foot wrench to uh, get the plug wires off." They usually have them around, and they're inexpensive. Uh, you know, I think I've paid ten, twelve bucks for each one of the ones I have. And uh, you know, a lot of times when I go to the big military shows and stuff like that, you know, I'll root around in one of those dirty dirty boxes and so like that that's got a bunch of stuff like that and. You can find them and you can find them pretty cheap. So another good tip for uh, working on your military vehicle. So like always, please leave a comment, give us a like. And if you haven't already, please, please hit that subscribe button. Every little bit helps. Um, you know, I love uh, working on the old military vehicles. I know it's a little bit of a, of a niche market. Um, but, you know, I hope that there's plenty more of you guys out there that... Uh, Enjoy working on uh, old military vehicles, so please follow along. And of course, check out the link below because you know we do have uh, the cool Green Iron TV March hats, t-shirts, stickers, sweatshirts, um, all kinds of cool stuff in there. Um, I really don't make anything much off of those, um, but it's just a cool way for you guys to uh, help out the channel and get a little bit. Uh, Put a little bit back into us to help us continue to work on the military vehicles. Uh, so, like always, thanks a lot. And you guys have a good day.